If you are watching this video, the chances are that you are already tired of listening to traveling salesman problem being introduced over and over again, so I'll keep it real brief. In case you need a more in-depth refresher of traveling salesman problem or TSP, I'll drop a link with more in-depth uh, explanation in the description of this video. TSP is about finding the shortest route through a set of points. Like the name suggests, it was originally motivated by a, yeah, formulated as a salesman uh, who needs to travel between the cities. And of course, you don't want to travel too much unnecessarily. You want to minimize the route. Um, this is, of course, a classic optimization problem. And it has two possible approaches. Uh, one is to brute force, brute force all combinations, also known as an exact approach. And the other one is all sort of different classes of heuristic approaches. The one is being very slow, but provides exact, meaning optimal solutions. And the other one is significantly faster, depending on the exact implementation, but not optimal. And of course, even for the exact uh, optimization is not as simple as just brute forcing all of them. I, there are a lot of approaches to make it smarter. The basic ones like uh, bridge and bound and some more sophisticated. And in fact, the one that's subject of this video is about a Miller Tucker Zemlin formulation for mixed integer problem. So expressing uh, the traveling salesman problem in terms of uh, uh, mixed integer programming so that we can leverage some of the really powerful uh, optimizers to do their job for us. All right, so how do we get help from those crazy efficient solvers with uh, exploring the entire solution space all the permutations from TSP. How do we employ them for this task? Well, we have to speak the language. And solvers, such as uh, uh, Cplex, for instance, they uh, expect the problems to be solved expressed as a constraint optimization problem. Uh, most commonly, either linear programming or mixed integer programming problems. I will not go into detail about that again link in the description if you are curious about the details um, but once you formulate uh, your problem uh, like TSP into a set of constraints uh, for mixed integer programming uh, not only can you use cplex with decades of, uh, of optimizations to quickly find the exact solution or maybe not quickly but quick air than anything you could program yourself in any reasonable time frame uh, but also you get a formulation in code that's uh, really easy to read and very succinct have a look at that in front of you is uh, miller tucker zemlin formulations one of the more simple ones for tsp in the uh, cplex uh, cplex uh, dsl for expressing the uh, the constraint optimization problems um, and this is just 47 lines of code with ample white space and a lot of comments and once we get a little bit into detail on that uh, you will see that even without understanding this dsl uh, you can mostly read what it does and understand so let's try to understand what is going on in here Let's try to understand the uh, miller tucker uh, Zemlin formulation of a traveling salesman problem. Uh, well, you see a few variables uh, declared, like number of stops, the n, uh, and uh, cost decision variable, and so some uh, rank variable. We'll focus on just uh, two of them, on the cost matrix and the decision variable, uh, because those ones are really crucial to understand, like close to 80% of the implementation and even those they are of course not sufficient to have the correct implementation of TSP uh, but they'll give you a good base uh, 
to continue on your own uh, if you want to dig more in, more in detail. Um, yeah, when thinking about uh, TSP, most humans will visualize and also think about it and then choose it, probably choose a data structure such as a graph, uh, like with, uh, with nodes represented as dots and edges between them with a direction uh, to indicate the route. And then, uh, and then possibly have a list of such edges uh, picked as a solution to TSP. So we begin here, and then the first item on the list would be uh, this edge identified by an index, and then the second one and the third until we go back to the initial node and solve TSP. And then uh, calculate the sum of, uh, of the properties uh, of those edges their weights uh, to give the score, what is the total cost. That would be the intuitive way. But solvers like CPLEX, uh, with their mixed integer programming formulation, they don't work with graphs, they work with matrices. With, uh, and then we have to represent those graphs of matrices, uh, which is simple, but somewhat less intuitive. We work with a cost matrix, which is a mate square matrix of uh, n by n, where n is the number of stops or cities, uh, and uh, it uh, contains uh, positive integers, which denotes the cost, which is a distance or travel time, something we want to minimize. Um, and of course, diagonally, this cost matrix will have zeros, because that's a node against itself, the distance to yourself is zero. And the second uh, most important variable in this formulation is the decision matrix, or decision variable, which is uh, the matrix of the same size, n by n, uh, which contains booleans, uh, beginning with all of them being set to false or zero. And when we decide to take given node, let's say uh, from, uh, from node uh, 1 to node 2, it would be x1, 2 indices, and we flip this cell from 0 to 1 from false to true. And that's how we indicate the route taken. Somewhat less intuitive than in case of, let's say, naive representation that most of you would use like in human thinking. Uh, but again, this is what the solvers requests. And uh, in the end, despite being less intuitive, it's still somewhat simple. And then ultimately, uh, to instruct the solver what is our goal? We need to present an objective function. And this one is here. It says minimize sum over all uh, items in both matrices. So between the cost matrix multiplied by a decision variable. Uh, and if you think about it, if we use uh, Boolean true, meaning one, uh, to select the edge that was taken between let's say some node one and two, and then the same one and two indexes will denote the cost of this decision, uh, then we get well the, the, the cost of the total trip. And this is what we want to minimize. Pretty simple. And of course, if we left at that, this formulation would have a lot of issues because it's uh, quite naive. I'm not going to go into too much detail on uh, miller tucker zemlin and uh, its specifics. Again, link in the description. Uh, but you can follow up uh, and go through those constraints on yourself. Well, enough about uh, CPLEX and uh, uh, miller tucker zemlin because uh, this video is not specifically about them. In fact, I wanted to talk about JUMP which is a pretty cool library in the Julia programming language ecosystem. Uh, with Jump, which is sort of a DSL for Julia, uh, you can express problems such as TSP uh, in uh, mixed integer, integer programming presentations and hand them over to those industry standard solvers such as CPLEX, but also many others like uh, GLPK, Gurobi, and many, many uh, different ones to do the heavy lifting of finding the exact solution for you. Aside from being able to formulate problem once in one DSL and then 
being able to switch to using different solvers instead of let's say using CPLEX specific DSL and then uh, replacing it with, with Grobby uh, that's just one of the benefits but uh, more importantly you actually can use a, a general purpose programming language which is Julia uh, to embed the uh, mixed integer programming problem solving within a context of a larger application. I decided to give Jump a try and implement Miller Tucker's Zemin formulation for TSP myself in it just to see how it feels and especially how it compares to classic CPLEX uh, implementation from the blog post. And first, a disclaimer. Uh, this is, uh, of course, a self-contained script in the form of uh, Jupyter Notebook. So, of course, it's uh, kind of like more, it's, there's more code in there than for CPLEX implementation, uh, just because it's uh, self-contained, contains visualization and also generates uh, the data. So it is a bit different. But at core, what the jumper does for you is actually one to one the same. All right, so this is a, uh, what I uploaded to GitHub, my implementation, Jupyter Notebook. And first, uh, some data structures. I define a delivery, which is a, a point XY, a floating point. And uh, the TSP problem is an array, so a list of such deliveries. And then I implemented a few uh, helper functions to generate random points, random delivery. Oh yeah, I call it delivery and not a city, which might be a bit confusing, uh, but it's because at my work, uh, I deal with uh, optimizing uh, package deliveries and not visiting cities. So that was what in was intuitive um, uh, for me, but it's still the same traveling salesman problem for the mouse behind it doesn't matter if you visit uh, something to deliver a package or to sell you something on your doorstep. So the latter one might be more obnoxious. Um, all right, and then I generate a random instance and that's how it looks like. Random instance meaning uh, what to be solved by TSP, so this array of, uh, of deliveries. And then because I wanted to make sure that it actually looks good, it makes sense. I wanted to visualize that. And that's uh, already small benefit of having everything in one language that's especially uh, well suited for visualization, data processing, and scientific programming, like Julia is, that you have uh, out of the box plots library for visualizing things simply. Uh, so I visualized my points that I got looks good on the range between 0 and 100 there's 20 of them this is what I wanted and then I need to prepare a cost matrix so like remember in the uh, CPLEX implementation uh, there was cost matrix so it's like a distance or a travel time uh, between the two points here we have the same but we have to calculate that in CPLEX, it was implicit that you kind of start with it. And it had to come from somewhere. Someone had to calculate a Euclidean distance or maybe a great circle distance if we are talking about big distances on actual sphere uh, between two points. And this is our cost matrix. So equivalent of a cost matrix from uh, the CPLEX implementation. I call it a travel matrix. And again, it's a basically the same, except that I use a float and the CPLEX implementation was an uh, integer matrix. Makes no material difference. And the same diagonal of the square matrix is zeros because the distance from yourself to yourself is zero. The rest is positive, it, uh, positive floats. Okay, so far, so good. And then we get to uh, the part which is uh, roughly equivalent to what CPLEX uh, code was doing because you see the constraints specified and the decision variable so the second matrix uh, the one that contained boolean variables here it's called a binary matrix 
that's basically the same except that jump dsl specifies uh the true for false so the boolean as bin binary it's still represented as zero or one in both implementations and then just as in case of cplex to get the travel time or the cost of given route we have to multiply or to have a dot product of route our decision variable to the travel matrix the, the the cost matrix and here i immediately notice that uh formulate formulating this function is somewhat more readable i like it more from how it looks like in in cplex one and we take this function and we say all right i would like to have i like to minimize the sum of the travel time it's going to be objective for my model pretty easy to read right well truth be told if we were to judge uh, purely on uh, how easy it is to read that then certainly both cplex dsl and jump would be would be very close still the implementation is not that terribly long and uh, the, the syntax affordances like for instance constraint uh, they are roughly similar between the, the two it's not like that one really wins over another decisively uh, so it's still the advantages that jump has is that for instance here i could easily use glpk instead of clpk uh, cplex and i could replace them uh, then of course is that they have uh, all the power of the general purpose programming language which uh, in cplex i did not it was basically just an input file uh, to optimize you could argue that cplex or glpk they have bindings uh, for many many languages uh, specifically they have also once they have bindings for c then you can have extensions for them in python or uh, or java or many others so you definitely can uh, write a bigger application or a script that leverages wider ecosystem um, uh, to embed uh, optimization in there that's true uh, but in jump you have a combination of okay you already have julia programming language with its nice visualization data processing capabilities broad ecosystem focused on scientific and mathematical computing with nice syntax such as let's say this dot product here uh, and you can express such problems with jump with exact same ease as you could with the dsl of cplex another thing i would like to try is to make a bigger application that has uh, at its core a component of uh, optimization using jump so everything in julia uh, it would be a nice exercise to see the maturity of web stack of julia as i'm tempted to actually make a, a simple api in it and then just see what kind of uh, issues i'm gonna encounter i might upload a video about it in the future